Please be seated. Good morning. I was thinking earlier, it would have been nice to have the story of Noah. <laughs> that was some storm that rolled through here. <laughs> Thanks for floating in. Um, I love the colic today. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, Jesus Christ. I love that liberty is contrasted with bondage and abundance is contrasted with sin. Sin is kind of a strange word for us, especially Episcopalians. Uh, but I want you to think about the way this is being defined for us in this collect, which is sin is anything that keeps you from abundance and freedom. If you're not feeling free, the freedom of abundance that abundance offers you, then you could describe that as sin. It's holding you back from what you truly want. It's not trying to shame you to be something that you're not. It's a different way to understand this. So sin is understood as living in all of that which keeps you from abundance. Anxiety, fear, hopelessness, holding on to regret, unworthiness, anger, arrogance, you name it. You can come up with your own words. How do you achieve the liberty of abundant life? Apparently, you simply, ask, simply have to ask for it and receive it. It's that easy. Is it easy? That requires a change of mind and heart that comes from a radically changed perspective. Has anyone ever said to you, last things first? <laughs> Usually it's the other way around. First, you know, first things. It wouldn't make any sense to say last things first. Ikea makes it very clear <laughs> that you start at page one and move meticulously through the steps involved in putting together your new bookcase. You don't start by setting your books on the box containing your new bookcase. An entire page is devoted to each step so that you don't read ahead. Focus. Step two, step three, step four. First things first. The material world teaches us about stages, processes, methodology, and steps as a way to reach our goals. Anything else would be, to use Paul's word today, foolish. But his point is we are called to foolishness. From day one, we are taught first things first. You must do well in school to get a good job. You must do well at the job to succeed. Succeeding will make you happy and fulfilled. Why? Because you will finally have a house, <laughs> a retirement fund. And then you can be free. Then you can be free, generous, and eventually filled with joy. First things first. So why are so many people who have reached such goals grumpy, unhappy, depressed, angry, alienated, and as for being human, truly unsuccessful? They live in a world of scarcity. His life is measured for them, materially. The material world teaches us first things first, but there is a different wisdom that is truly spiritual which might be described as last things first. 
my last things, meaning what is it ultimately that you're trying to get to in life? Joy, peace, reconciliation, love, compassion, purpose. Those are the last things that we think are way somewhere else off into the future. Last things first could be understood as anti-someday thinking. Someday. What if you can actually lead with joy instead of wait for it? What if you could lead with happiness, with peace? What if the real problem for us is that spirituality is in our spiritual lives, is that we have a mindset which says that such things are not available in the present. They're out there somewhere. You know, we think of these things as having to be earned, worked for, understood, mastered, or attained. Usually after a lot of of steps, going through a lot of processes. Those miserable people we read about today who were fasting have this material mindset. To get what we think we truly want in life, here's the kinds of things we're going to do. And all it does is anger God in this story and anger them because it's not coming from who they really are or what they really want. And so they are fasting and they're arguing. Makes perfect sense to me. I promised our staff one year that I would never give up coffee again for Lent. It didn't make me a better person, especially in the mornings. Um, and so, what if the problem is that we ignore the joy, grace, gratitude, the peace, the freedom, the abundance, which is right here, right now? What if the problem is really the way Jesus puts it? That it's all there, you just put a bushel over it. You hide it from yourself, we hide it from other people. We are too busy looking somewhere else for what we're actually seeking. That bushel keeps us from shining our light, not only in our lives personally, but in our lives out there in the world. It keeps us from those acts of justice that we've discussed today. Those actions where we can go forth with a real sense of life and possibility. And so we ignore all of that. And we get into the someday mindset. Someday I will exude joy. Someday I will be happy. Someday I will be free. Someday I will smile. Did you know that smiling is a spiritual practice? I didn't realize that until of late, the importance of it. Um, you wouldn't know it walking into a lot of churches that it's a spiritual practice, <laughs> but it is. And it is something that helps us know that some of that light is starting to come out. Some of that faith possibility, that abundance. Right? I remember back in my Baptist church, there was this uh, elderly woman who would pound her fist and talk about the gift of joy. <laughs> and we all secretly thought it would really be great if that joy inside her notified her smile, her face. Because it didn't look like there was a lot of joy going on. But there is a connection between your body and that uh, positive uh, place that exists in each one of us. Jesus taught that the smile does not have to be put off. The smile is now. Joy, compassion, peace are spiritual gifts that are right in front of us if we open ourselves to God's love, God's provision, God's promises, and take that bushel off of all of that good stuff 
and let it out. That God knows what you need, who you are, and is present in your unfolding story. What else is necessary? I think it's why the prayer he taught us asks, gets us asking for daily bread, not monthly supplies. Give us this day our daily bread. It is all learned in the present moment. Now, I don't know who coined the phrase the upside-down kingdom to describe Jesus' version of the kingdom of God, but it's accurate. It's opposite of the kingdoms of this world and seems like foolishness to those who have neglected or even abandoned their spiritual lives. You must become as a child to enter the kingdom. Notice no reference to the adults of God, always the children of God. The last will be first. The first will be last and servant to all, upside down. Do not worry is upside down in a mindset that suggests that your only sense of well-being is in your ability to control You must die to live. Let go to get a hold on your life. Blessed are those who mourn, who are meek, who are accused of joining the upside-down kingdom, who are embracing what the world sees as foolish. Oh, how about generosity being the cause of wealth? How backward is that one? Receive, not by hoarding, but by giving. Backwards, upside down. This upside down kingdom inspires pacifism, compassion, peace, understanding, because it's easy. Yeah. And it's easy because it's already here. In other words, it, it's close. It's right with us, right now in this moment. Within us, we can breathe, we can stop, we can do that. Now, it feels very difficult at times to do that. But actually, we've convinced ourselves that it's something unattainable, something that's so far out there, something that, that we have to work on, figure out, nail it to some place that we can control. But all will be well. And all will be well. And all manner of things will be well, so wrote the mystic Julian of Norwich. How about starting with that place? Because we really do have a place to start. Everybody agrees with that. So are we going to start in a negative place? Oh, that's a good foundation to work from. I'm angry. I'm going to change the world. I'm depressed. I'm going to do something. I'm going to try to control something. Or do we start with that light that within us is within us, that light of joy, that light of possibility, that light of faith? There are so many promises that God makes to us. Just choose one and go for it. I was thinking of the one in Proverbs says that promises that uh, putting your mind upon God, God will grant you the desires of your heart. What are the desires of your heart? Why not start with that? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Even if I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Start with that. Start with those sort of positive elements. In the reading today, Paul admits he led, not with strength, but weakness. The first requirement of being a good leader, weakness. How's that for upside down? How's that for openness? How's that for vulnerability? When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God 
to you in lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of the power that comes with that spirit. So that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. And yet he goes on to say, among the mature, we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish. We speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for all for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is, it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love God. This abundance, starting with that. And even though most every spiritual prophet argues that it is easy, it's e what makes it easy is it's simple and it's available. What makes it difficult is the transition from letting go of those things we think are helpful to us, our fear, anxiety, our worry, every little negative thing that comes at us, every situation, every awful experience that we have, every fear that we embrace, it takes something to let that go. And so the invitation is that we let it go, that we literally offer it to God. So I invite you during the meditation today to think about how you currently are completing the sentence. Someday, I, oh, there we go. Someday, and ask yourself, what is it that you want? What is it that you're looking for? And imagine taking the bushel off of that and welcoming it into your life today. Let it be your daily bread. Stop worrying about the monthly supply.